All right. Hello. So my name is Violet Brown, and for my senior exhibition, I did the history of the Hayseeder Balls on Mount Desert. Um, so my senior X presentation is on the Hayseeders Ball and the Wayback Ball and how the culture of the island has impacted the people around them. Um, all the information I have is displayed on this web page, starting with my journey and my progression throughout the process. I wanted to introduce the ball. So the Hayseeders Ball. So this started in the late 1800s. It consisted of 40 Hayseeders, workers, farmers, all over the island. There were originally seven different balls on the island. Many arose out of spite for the rich people and the tourists and the summer folks on the island. So um, locals got tired of working the rich people's balls and they made their own ball. So um, they created something that lasted over a century. Um, so this photo here, it shows, um, this is the, one of the way back balls in the early 1900s in Holes Cove. Um, so this one invitation, they sent out invitations to the 40 Hayseeders and whoever they invited to the balls. And this one is the 100th anniversary. And if any invitation can describe the ball, I think this one does very well. I'm going to read it for you. So in 1894, way back then, an idea came to a bunch of men. They, they would have a dance and it would be real grand. There'd be eats, music, a real good band called themselves the Hayseeders, the elite of the town, made up of bylaws and newspaper browns, to send out the invites with times and dates to come to the party and bring their mates. It would be a fancy affair by invite only, wear old-fashioned duds, hitch up the pony, then take themselves to the music hall and they'd have the first of the Hayseeds ball. Each year since then, the same has been true, even, the war, even through wars and fire and politics too. It mattered not what went on in the world, they grabbed a partner and waltzed in world. Decor and eats have all been the same, hayseed or wayback, whatever the name. We all wanted, we want you to come down to the Masonic Hall and dance till dawn at the Hayseeds Ball. The time has come to dig out them clothes, press them up, and get ready to pose for pictures, which would be plenty, because gosh, by cranky, it's been a century. <laughs> so they did all kinds of little poems like that throughout all their invitations, and that one was a pretty big, pretty big one. <laughs> So my essential question, um, how have we kept the ball alive through this modern age? Um, I knew I wanted to base my essential question around culture in the island because of, I wanted a strong connection to culture because of the majority of the people I spoke with at the ball. It made them really feel at home. It was a really warm feeling they gave. Um, everybody was so comfortable and relaxed having been at the ball and it, I found that it was a really big part of people's lives and I really wanted to broadcast that message for everybody to see. Um, so my question changed many times because every time I thought I had a question I would realize I would read an article or I would see a photo and then realize how much it really how much it really means to people and then I changed it a whole bunch of times but I realized I wanted it to be much more personalized for people. I definitely wanted to emphasize the before and then the today aspect, so these two photos kind of describe it. This is the ballroom in um, one of the way back balls in the 1900s, and then this one is from 2019 back in March when I went to the ball. <laughs> So my journey, I'm just going to say how terrified I am about presenting, so this is really hard for me right now. Um, but um, starting out thinking about what I was going to do for this project, I had a whole bunch of different ideas. I thought about um, neurology and different types of brain experiments, but I got really lost in thinking about what I could do. Um, outside plant life, apothecary, I really love nature and getting um, finding use for plant life rather than like regular pharmaceutical medicines, you know. Um, but I just got really lost with that. I had no idea what I was going to do. So um, exercise and nutrition, I like working out and I like taking care of my body. So I thought that, but I didn't have anywhere to fit in like a gym class or something. So I didn't do that one this semester. Um, yoga, aromatherapy, acutherapy. So my grandfather, he does acutherapy a lot, weekly usually, so I thought that was really something. But um, with my work schedule and everything, it was really hard to try to find time to do that with him. Um, I do archery most of the time on the weekends, like during the summer, and I thought that would be really interesting, but I 
don't have a lot of supplies and that would have broke the bank. <laughs> so I didn't do that. Volunteer firefighting and EMT, I really love helping people. So I thought that would be a really productive way to, to use my time. But with my, with my schedule and my uncle, he's an EMT, so our schedules just didn't clash, right? So I was stuck again. Um, doing the hay seeders, how did I end up doing this one? I was really just, I said, why not? Um, Ms. Dillon had suggested it to the class and talked about how much Bob Chaplin was really interested in it, and I just said, why not? With the time limit and everything, I felt very behind, so I was like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> um, so learning about the ball, I realized, I found that um, the ball actually was held at the fire station in Bar Harbor at one point in time, and I almost changed my whole project back to that, but realized timing just wasn't right. So my strategy and planning, um, I had no idea where to start. I was really confused and I didn't know where to go, but I knew that I'd have people to help me, guide me in the right directions. Um, as soon as I got my mentors, Ms. Dillon really helped everything, put everything together for me. Um, so the cold day, <laughs> when I was getting my information all together, I had a couple different meetings set up on this one day and I showed up to the historical center and one of my, the Debbie Dyer I was supposed to meet, she didn't, she didn't show up so I had a really rough time there. I sat out, I ended up sitting outside for over an hour which was pretty rough. I ended up getting sick afterwards so that wasn't fun but um, I got all my other information from my other sources so that was helpful. Um, a stalemate. So as soon as I got all this information together, my project kind of came to an abrupt stop. I had nowhere to compile it all, and that's when Miss um, Miss Dillon and Miss Mack helped me put together my website. So um, my mentors, I Bill Horner was one of my mentors for this. Bob Chaplin, also. Um, I set up various mentor meetings with Bob and Bill, and also Tim Garrity over at the Historical Society, but with my busy work schedule, it was really hard to coordinate time and dates and stuff, but I got that done. Um, so, I wanna give a little history of the island to help um, understand where the ball originated from. So, I read this book I got from the library, Isles des Mont Deserts, so, this was a book by W.H. Sherman, and it talked about the French navigator Samuel de Champlain and his um, conquests throughout MDI in the very early years. And this was a map of the early, the outer regions of Mount Desert where he traveled. So, um, Mount Desert throughout the years in the early 1800s when it was just starting up. Um, there were little shops, farmers markets, boat buildings. This is when the fishing industry really started and where MDI started to get most of their um, money and income from. In the 1870s and 80s, wealthy tourist people, summer homes started. This is when Western expansion was pretty big, the art movement. This is where a lot of the artists and tourists came. Artists came. In, um, 1894, this is when the first annual Hayseeders Ball came about. Um, in the early 1900s, it was a full-on fishing village, big tourists booming. It was um, in 1910-1920s, um, automobiles were huge. Um, locals in the town, there were less jobs for locals in the town because of all the wealthy people coming in and overtaking everything. And this is really when um, the locals have had enough. So the Hayseeds Ball. So in, 19, in 1894, everything changed. So there were 40 original Hayseeders. As I said before, there were locals around the island who have gotten together and have kind of protested against the, the rich. So there were 40 original Hayseeders to be, in hay, to be a hay seeder, you had to obtain the placeholding from your father or your grandfather. In some, 
there were, in some cases, a Hayes student didn't have a son to pass it on to, where it would go to a nephew or even sometimes a close family friend. Um, you can see why women, of course, didn't like this, and neither did children. You had to be 21 years of age to attend the ball. Um, so some wacky traditions that they had. So dried fish was a typical delicacy at this event, which was really odd. I actually tried some when I went to the ball, which was, it was very odd. I had a hard time chewing it. <laughs> um, many locals talked about how it wouldn't be the same without it, even though, despite its odd taste. <laughs> um, not stupid, but very clever. So kind of a way to like rub it in the rich people's face. Dur the writings, the uh, invitations, the newspaper articles, most of the words had been misspelled to kind of show it to the rich people. Um, they might be poor folk, but it's kind of, it was kind of a funny saying. <laughs> um, so the ball took place at the old casino. That photo's upside down. That shouldn't be upside down. Um, so it took place at the old casino um, until it burnt down in 1970 and then it went over to the Great Masonic Hall over in Bar Harbor. Um, the ball switched up its location various times throughout the year. Like I said before, it even took place at the fire station. Um, they'll party anywhere. <laughs> so some of the typical attire for the night, I thought this was really interesting. So um, thanks to Norma Sperling, one of the folks who helped me put together all this. Um, this is one of her dresses and mannequins from her own personal collection. Um, she collects vintage dresses from the 1800s and 1900s. It's something she loves doing. Um, Norma's father was actually one of the original hay, hay seeders from back in the day. And so see these photos are just some of her dresses, various styles, various colors. She had a multiple different hats all in a big bundle there. These dresses and this suit belong to Tony and Joanne Sosa. So they were other hay seeders at the ball. Um, they've been doing it for years on end too. I met this woman, her name is Amanda. She had been a first time attendant to the ball and she had been talking about how she had been very frustrated about how no women, there are no women hay seeders. So currently she's trying to figure out how to change that and hopefully she keeps going with that. <laughs> her, her, um, her dress is also very vintage. She got it from her grandmother. I don't believe her family attended the ball, but they do have old time clothing, so. So the messages within the poems. So like I said before, all the poems, all the invitations had poems written on the front of them, usually describing the ball, sometimes um, different history events that are happening throughout just the time period. Um, these ones are both from <laughs> the year I was born, from the Clam City Waybackers and the Hay Cedars Ball, which I thought was really interesting. They talk about um, the presidential election with George Bush, with George W. Um, the cold winters, um, the different types of food shortages that were happening. They covered just about all kinds of different topics throughout history. This is 1947-1955. And then this one is the 125th. This is from the one I actually attended. It actually has my name written on it, which was pretty fun. <laughs> so the band and the music that was at the night, they had a live band that was performing the whole night, which was really interesting. This is a photo from the ball I attended in, back in March. So it took place at the Atlantic Oceanside Event, Event Center this year, which is on uh, Eden Street in Bar Harbor. Mr. Remy, our music teacher here at MDI, was actually a part of the band this year, so that was pretty funny meeting him there. And I have a video of the Grand March. 
that I will show. These are a list of the songs that were played throughout the years. That was a fun night when we went back in March. <laughs> so, and the ball lives on. So here I have a whole bunch of different um, newspaper articles throughout the years. These are back in the early 1900s. So most of the articles that were put out were either recapping events of the night that have happened, what people wore, who was there, who they were with, stuff like that, or sometimes they were actually introducing the ball, what was going to happen, what time everything was. between the Bar Harbor Records, the Bar Harbor, the Bar Harbor Times, there were several different articles that printed him. So today, so the Hayseeders Ball is one of the last of the seven balls around the island. The Hayseeders and the Waybackers are the only ones alive. Throughout the 125 years, there are thousands of memories that happened and I love how the spirit of it is all alive today. Tomorrow and days to come. So in this new age with the rise of equality and women empowerment, uh, like I said, I spoke to many different women that night who were really hoping to get some change in there with women hay theaters. I don't know how that's going to, I don't know the outcomes of that yet, but I hope they do something in that. Um, so um, I definitely felt a sense of community amongst the people at the ball, everything, everybody was so happy and it was such an uplifting attitude the whole night I was there. Everybody was friendly, telling old stories, it just felt like I was transported back in time almost. Um, I feel like that feeling is what the ball is supposed to give and that's really what I hope to broadcast throughout this presentation. Um, and with this website I really hope that it helps get the word out there to more of the younger people in my generation that have no clue like it no clue about it like I did. <laughs> so throughout my learning, um, I have been preparing for this presentation throughout the year and it has been a challenge. So <laughs> thank you for that. Um, listening to, learning about the different areas of the wall really gave me a better understanding of island life and the different community around. Um, I don't live on island so it was really it was a whole learning experience for me, which I thought was really fun. Um, this project helped me plan and help my ability to plan and schedule meetings and everything because I was juggling everything from school to work to uh, mentor meetings and meetings in the community. So it was a challenge, but it was fun. 
Um, so starting out, I had no idea w anything about, I didn't know anything about this project. So I feel like I've come a long way from that now. <laughs> so I just want to thank everybody who helped me during my presentation, Bill Horner, Bob Chaplin, um, all the different people that have helped me provide my information. Ms. Dillon, Ms. Mack, and Ms. Muzzy for all their motivation throughout everything. And I just want to thank everybody who's on my panel today because this is terrifying for me. <laughs> and then I just have my sources and my reflections afterwards. Oh, and I have my packet that's printed out. It's in my bag. <laughs> yes, I think so. So are there any questions from anybody in the audience, anything that you're interested or curious about? So I'll wait. Sorry. I've been using my thing. Can you use that little handout? Okay. <laughs> so I'm curious about your format, because a lot of times people put together so tell me why the web page and then maybe what the purpose of this web page might be for So I chose a web page because I was trying to um, broadcast that message of the more modernizing of the ball, even though trying, you're trying to keep the, modern, the um, historical aspects of it alive throughout the modern age. So I thought maybe a website would help get more people in my generation open to it since everybody's like more electronically driven, you know. So the purpose of it wasn't sol solely for this presentation, but you no. want this to be a resource for... Right, more in the public access. Okay. And then how are you um, making sure that this is available or that people can find this? Right. So um, with Tim Garrity's help, I've had... He's allowed me to put my website, link my website to the Historical Society webpage. So hopefully people in the public will be able to access it. Will there be an opportunity for uh, waybackers to add stories about the history um, to the report? I am not sure. I feel like that's more of Tim a Tim question for the um, computer aspect of it all. I'm not sure. Very interesting approach. It's, does, do you know if anyone has done this before? That I they have created a website so that you can continue, uh, so that other people on the island or other people could have access to this and learn about the history? I am not sure if anybody's done it before. I know a lot of people I talked to didn't think that there was, and that's why Ms. Mack thought it would be a really good idea. Right. Um, I know in probably some of the later newspaper articles, they probably said some names. Um, like I said, one of Norma's, her father was one of the original ones. Um, I didn't get his name, though. <laughs> Do you think that they're ever going to let women be hayseeders? I don't know. I mean, it's been 125 years. It's been mainly male-driven, so I don't know. <laughs> that tradition kind of lives now. Right. Violet, what did you learn about storytelling? I, I know when you started, you had this mass of information all over the place, all different directions. How did you, uh, how did you figure out how to crunch this down into a 20-minute presentation <laughs> on a website with you know, seven or eight pages? Well, I really, I don't think I gave it enough justice, really, because the type of stories they told me throughout the ball and the different meetings I had, I, I feel like I didn't do enough justice for that. It's a really... I guess really talking with the hay seeders is how you can really get to know the real feeling of it. I mean, I can tell you how I felt the whole night, but until you really talk and experience it, I mean, that's when you really know. Well, a, a thought on continuing this is I wonder if you'd be interested in adding a comment page where people can add material files and comments. Yeah, I think that would be a really great idea. I'm just <laughs> a little technologically declined, so yeah. I'd have to talk with a few people.